United States in trade, as you know. We, uh, through a different form, NATO, uh, we protect them. And yet, uh, if you build a car in the United States, you can't sell it in Europe. You just can't sell it. It's, it's impossible. Uh, the same thing with our farmers. Our farmers find it very difficult to do business. You know, we have a deficit with them of $250 billion, which people don't know. It sounds so nice, the European Union, but let me tell you, they're, they're uh, not as tough as China, but they're bad. And I let them know it. And that's probably why they notified you. No, they don't treat uh, our country well. We defend them. You know, uh, with Ukraine, so we're in for 250 billion and they're in for about 71 billion and they have the same size. It's, if you add up the European nations that, you know, for, in terms of an economy, it's about the same size, wouldn't you say, as us. And they're in, yeah. and, and, and they're in much greater risk. They, they're right there. We have an ocean separating us from, in this case, the enemy would be Russia. It used to be yeah. for the Soviet yeah. Union, but let's assume they're close enough. And what happens is uh, they're in for 70-something million, I, I, think, I think even less than that, a uh, billion. And we're in for about 250 billion, and it could be a lot higher than that. And I say, why aren't you going to equalize? Why aren't they paying what we're paying? And they're in much more, you know, they're, it's much more important for them because of the fact that, you know, they're right near there. I mean, they're all sort of in that location. We're not. But they yeah. should, they should, and I did it with NATO. We were, there were only seven countries that were paid up in NATO out of 28 at the time. And the United States, yeah, was, subsidi yeah. the United States was subsidizing NATO, tremendously subsidizing NATO. And I said, I yeah. went in and I said, yeah. you got to pay up. If you don't pay up, we're not going to defend you any longer. I took a lot of heat. But you know what happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in. And yeah, uh, you know. I, I think I think a lot of the public isn't isn't aware of the fact that the United States pays a disproportionate share of of the NATO expenses. And then uh, we get taken though, like, advantage of on trade. So think about yeah, it. Well, I mean, the point of NATO is defending Europe. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's like then, OK, well, why why is the United States paying disproportionately more to defend Europe than Europe? That doesn't make sense. That's unfair. Um, and that that is an appropriate thing to address. Well, um, you know, when you talk about so, cost cutting and savings and everything else, I mean, honestly, look, there's nobody that feels worse about the Ukraine situation than I do, because I know it would have never happened. I know Zelensky. He was very honorable to me because when they went with the Russia hoax and they said I had a phone call with him, he said it was a perfect phone call. It was a great phone call. He could have grandstanded and, you know, said, oh, he he was very threatening. He said, no, it was a very nice phone call. He, I called him up to congratulate him on his win, and you end up uh, getting impeached because these people are lunatics. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was talking about the difference from the people within and the enemies on the outside. In many cases, the people from within are more dangerous for our country than the Russians and the Chinas. If you have a smart president, you're not going to have a problem with them. You're going to make, you're going to do things. Yeah. Now, they've taken advantage yeah, of absolutely. us incredibly, but you're going to do things with the right person. Yeah, well, I, 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 think, I think it's obvious that you're, you're you know, a believer and an advocate of, of free speech because during your first term as president, you were attacked relentlessly every day, often very unfairly with, fal you know, with, with false attacks. And, and you didn't try to shut down the media. You didn't try to uh, in, inhibit their freedom of speech. And I think that says a lot. Well, the good thing is that you and I have, and some people, very few, uh, we can get the word out. Although sometimes it's hard because they don't want to print it, you know, like like we're having a great conversation right now. Kamala wouldn't have this conversation. She can't because she's not smart. No. <laughs> you know, she's not a smart person, by the way. She can't have this conversation. And Biden, we don't even have to talk about it. I mean, he couldn't have this conversation. He'd, he would have given up on the first half of a question. He would have walked out. He would have said, where am I? Where am I going? So anyway, but yeah. uh, no, he wouldn't have this. That's true. Not a lot of people would have this conversation, but, you know, we cover a lot of territory. But the beauty is that, you you know, we can have a conversation and I, yes, I'm able have to get it out without, because I get treated <laughs> this is unfairly. A, this by is a really place. big point. You can actually have a conversation <laughs> with you. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> and you can't have a conversation with Biden or Kamala. It's like not, uh, it's not possible. That's yes, true. Um, <laughs> So this is like talking to an NPC. No. So it's just impossible. Well, but think um, of it. We need a man or a person who's 
unbelievably sharp in order to stop all the nuclear danger and all the dangers that I'm talking about. And I got along with all this. You know, I got along with Kim Jong-un. We had dinner. We had everything. And he, he really liked me. And I got along with him really well. By the way, he's he's the absolute boss over there. You know, a lot of people said, oh, do you think he really? Uh, let that's let, for let sure. me tell you, I <laughs> saw things that you don't want to know about. He is the boss. But you know, we had a good relationship. And and he doesn't like uh, Biden. He considers him a, a stupid man, he said. He's a stupid man. Well, at least he speaks his mind. But, you know, in this country, you're not sort of allowed to say it, but I guess you are. You should be allowed to say it. Yeah. It's true. But we need really, we need smart people. And we need people that have an ability to lead. And she doesn't have that ability. Can you imagine? Now, you know Chairman yeah. Xi very well. Can you imagine her and him negotiating or... No, Even silly. standing it together, um, it, it is the whole concept yeah. is ridiculous. She is terrible. She's terrible. But she's getting a free ride. I it saw was, a picture of her yeah, yeah. on Time magazine today. She looks like the most beautiful actress ever to live. I, it was a drawing. And uh, actually, yeah, yeah. she looked very much like our great first lady, Melania. She looked, she looked, <laughs> didn't look, yeah. she didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that, right? Yeah, well, you know, maybe it's like I think part of what you know people in America want to, you know, people in America want to want to feel excited and inspired about the future. They want to feel like the future is going to be better than the past, and that this that America is going to do things that are greater than uh, we've done in the past, reach right. new heights that make you proud to be an American, and uh, and and excited about the future. Um, they want and, the American uh, you know, dream this, back. The, you know, they want the American dream back more important than anything else. It's it's like you don't have that today because the people, they've been just sucked. They see incompetent people running our, you know, the, the Biden thing is very interesting. People just found him to be incompetent. And when I debated him, I was like, is this for real? It was. Yeah, it's just, it's, it was just absurd. Um, but, you know, I think there, there are like, you know, some some, you know, grand projects that, that, that we, we could do. I mean, I think like. You know, we we could we could build a base on the moon. We could send American astronauts to Mars. We we, right. we could uh, build, build build high speed connections yep. that are you know more advanced than anything else in the world between our cities, so people have fast transport. Um, you know, we, we, it's possible to so, solve traffic with tunnels. Um, right. We, we've we were, you know we already made prog great progress in Vegas doing that, and um, you know, and 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 just do things that are exciting and inspiring and make the future feel like it's better than the past. Well, I saw and, what like, you did in uh, Vegas, uh, and I'll tell you, it was amazing. I I got to see. I took a big glimpse at it, and it's incredible. What you you know, it's incredible, and you could do that all over. You could do that all over. It's uh, it's deep. Yeah, you don't even need much structure. You know, assuming you're in the right area. No, it's it's, it's straightforward. It's amazing. Um, so uh, and and uh, like uh, I think we could do some some things that like like China's got incredible uh, high speed rail between its cities, but I think it's actually possible um, uh, with 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 tunnels if if it was deregulation with with an ability to actually was like legal to, to to actually do the tunnels. I think you could have high speed uh, uh, tunnels that are actually better uh, than 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 anything else in the world for high speed transport between cities, and that would be something that. You know, Americans can say, "Wow, okay, we've we've got something that's cooler than anyone else in the yeah. world." That's that's the kind of thing that makes you proud to be an and American. And much safer than surface uh, trains, where there is a danger there. You know, with people, with crazy people, yeah. it's much safer, much better. Uh, and you know, it's sad because I've seen some of the greatest trains. I I find it fascinating, and I've seen the systems and how they work, and the bullet trains they call them, I guess, and they yeah. they go unbelievably fast, unbelievably comfortable with no problems. And we don't have anything like that in this country, not even close. And it yeah. doesn't make sense that we don't. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I, I think also like the, there's, you know, I just, I, I'm kind of hopping on the excess regulation, but I think something that, um, that I think people can generally understand is that what happens with laws and regulations is that they just there's more and more of them every year, and unless there's a process to clean them up, eventually everything becomes You're illegal, right. and and that actually sl sl it slows down the development of new technologies. I mean, if you take the sort of like I think we, we there's, there's there's room for some reform at the at the FDA yeah. Uh, for yeah. uh, improving the speed with which we uh, you know approve uh, drugs that that could help uh, save lives and improve people's yeah. lives. Um, and, I uh, worked very and, hard on that. You know, you know that, we got that down yeah. to a, to the lowest number ever. 
And we got uh, therapeutics approved in the FDA that people can't even believe the speed. But I, I took them on. I, I don't think they like me too much, but I got things approved in the FDA at, at, at numbers that they wouldn't believe. And, you know, it's a very bureaucratic group. Actually, it's a fine group of people in many cases. I got to know a lot of them, but I was pushing them really hard for Regeneron, for so many different things that, that were really pretty amazing. But, but the FDA takes too long. They would, it's 12 years to get a product approved. I got it down to four and I yeah. got some things done very quickly, but it's, uh, it's really something that is going to have to be worked on because it takes too long. It just takes too long. Yeah. It, it just takes too long. And, and it's, you, you end up in the same with, with the approval, but it just, it's just, you know, it takes years instead of something that, that I think could potentially take months and yeah. uh, that improves, improves people's lives. Yeah. I think, you know, and, and, and but, but it, I I just wanted to sort of hop on this point that like there has to be an active process uh, for re reducing rules and regulations because otherwise they, they just keep building up every year yep. and you get like hardening of the arteries and eventually everything's illegal uh, or takes forever um, and and then and then we 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 just um, we, we just ossify as a society we just uh, we can't make any progress yeah. and and that's it's a really big well, deal you know elon just so, getting back to the fda for one second i got something done called right to try this is where you can go in and if you're terminally ill you can use a space age uh, you know medicine or whatever it may be we have the best doctors the best labs in the world we really do and but people would go to other countries because you couldn't use this the product even if they thought it worked because it's going through the fda I got it approved yeah. where you can, yeah. you, you basically, you look, nobody wanted, the doctors didn't want it because of the liability. The country didn't want it, our country, because they didn't want to get sued. These are people terminally ill. The insurance companies didn't want it and the pharmaceutical companies, nobody wanted it. I got everybody into a room and we came up with an agreement that you won't get sued. And also they didn't want it on their record. If somebody's terminally ill and they die after taking a drug, they didn't want that on their record. So we set a second, a, a separate list if somebody was, so it wouldn't count as a negative, yeah. okay? And as you know, we got it yeah. done. We have saved, right to try. They've been trying to get this done for 58 yeah. years. And it sounds simple, but it wasn't because of, you know, I mean, you know, the insurance companies, nobody wanted it, but we got it done. Sure. Somebody signs, you sign a, document that you're not going to sue the insurance companies, the country, you're not going to sue anybody. And we got it done. And we're saving tens of thousands of lives right to try. Hopefully you never need it. But if you yeah. do, you don't have to travel to Asia. You know, people, right. if they had money, they go to Asia, yeah, they sure. go to Europe. If they don't have money, they go home and die. That's what happened. They'd go home and die. Yeah. Well, I well, well, I mean, and, and actually, to, to to give Europe some some props here, it's like if a drug is approved it, approved in the in the, in Europe, which has a crazy amount of regulations, it should obviously be approved in the U.S. Yeah. I mean, they get more regulations than we do. So, what? Why would a drug be approved in Europe and not in the U.S.? That that's crazy. Well, we did it. We um, did something that really they've been trying to do it for fifty years, and they just couldn't get it done. And I got it done. And it's uh, it's really something. But you're right. Some people go to Europe because a drug isn't approved here, but it's approved in Europe. And it's a drug that, generally speaking, would yeah. work. It's pretty crazy. Absolutely. And you're right. And I, th I think so, as long as people are properly informed of, of the pros and cons and, like, the, these are the risks, these are, you know, this is the risk. And, like, you, you make your own decision. Yeah. Um, that, that makes sense. Well, I think just, you so, know, in sort of closing up, I, and by the way, I'm looking at the numbers. you get got a lot of people listening I hope you don't get yeah. nervous because you got a lot of people listening to you right now, like 60 million or something. What is that number? It's crazy. It's amazing how you can see that right away. How many, what is the number? Wow. What is it? Well, wow. I, I think in terms well, that's of people, a, that's, that's a big, that that's bigger than you said. You you said twenty five, and you're more than much more than double that number twenty five million. I think you're going to be sixty or seventy, and I guess over a period of time. Hey, that's I congratulate you. Do I get paid for this or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think actually in terms of the number of people that will will hear this conversation um, over the next uh, you know few days to right. weeks, uh, it, it's going to be a hundred. That's what they say. Yeah, that's good. Well, look, it's an yeah. honor. I but I I just asked this: Are you better off now, or were you better off when I was president? Nobody's better off now. People, you know, we put out polls on that, and nobody's better off now. 
Inflation has killed it. And, you know, they also feel very unsafe. You look at what's going on with a lot of different things. You look at the riots we had at yeah. the colleges over. I mean, it's ridiculous, but right. all of the rest, they just feel unsafe. And now they really feel unsafe because you have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. I call it Biden well, migrant yeah. crime. Maybe I'll call it well, Kamala I, I, migrant crime. But, you, you know, I mean, with all these things, I always try to, like, try to get to the ground truth by just asking people. And, you know, my, my mom lives in New York, and I, I was like, you know, mom, you know, do you know, have you, any of your friends, you know, been attacked or assaulted? And she said, yeah, three of her friends in, in three separate Crazy. incidents were assaulted just 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 in recent months, just walking around the streets in New York. And I and I and, and I said, well, did what what happened to the people that assaulted them? Oh, nothing. They, they, they got away. Like and, and they, they, they just know they always get away. No, nothing's going to. And they don't ever and they, they don't even bother reporting it because there's not they know that there's not they're not gonna you know people are not gonna get prosecuted they just they just let you know violent criminals out in new york the with, only one that gets avail. prosecuted is donald trump they don't get they prosecute trump yeah i mean it's it's, it's just obviously messed up oh, it's terrible if, if violent criminals are being are, are being getting off scot-free yeah. um and 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 meanwhile that the the you know new york spending massive resources prosecuting you and it's like, what's this, you know, and, and I think the, the, the sort of sensible public said, looks at this and says, what the heck's going on here? This is obviously abuse of the legal system. Um, you, you know, the, the legal system is supposed to be protecting the public right. from um, violent criminals. And it, it should be obviously allowing the public to make their own decision about who should be president as opposed to, you know, some, uh, you know, legal case once they start this precedent because this can go on with the next one i mean this is a very bad precedent what they're doing in terms of you know going after their political opponent and that's all it is it's going after their political opponent and yeah. and then you get a judge who's you know a, a strong democrat and i'm being nice when i say that in many cases crooked as hell but you get a judge and you go into an area where a republican gets three or four percent of the vote and you know you'll have a jury pool yeah. with uh people that hate Republicans or hate, it could sure. also be the other way, though, because it could start the other way in areas where they hate exactly. Democrats. And you get into yep. a Pandora's box, it's a very dangerous thing for uh, this country and a very dangerous thing even for the state. New York City is yep, losing, absolutely. New York City and state lose a lot of business over what they did to me, because these people say, we don't want that to happen to us. That's no justice system. You have an unfair system yes. of justice and it's costing New York State a tremendous amount of money. People are leaving and companies are leaving and they won't come back. So, you know, all of that stuff is important, but the economy now is the big thing and we can turn that economy up so fast and people are going to be back again. We're going to get rid of yeah, inflation. I think there's, I think there's a, lot, a lot of opportunity. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I just want to, I, I, I want to congratulate uh, you. You've done an amazing job. You are, you have definitely got a fertile mind you know, we can talk, you and I can talk about rockets. Well, it's and, kind of you to say, thank well, you. Well, tunnels, we can talk about <laughs> tunnels and rockets and and uh, electric cars, so many things. And now you're, you're into the AI and that's going to be another beauty, I'll say. So it's uh, yeah. it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing you've done, Elon. It's an amazing thing and I well, congratulate well, you. I mean, thank you. And well, I mean, I just uh, say here, you know, here's to an exciting, inspiring future that people can look forward to and be optimistic and excited about what happens next. And that's uh, the kind of future that I think uh, you will bring as president. And that's why I endorse you. Well, I appreciate that. That endorsement meant a lot to me. Not all endorsements mean that much, to be honest. Your endorsement meant a lot. And, you know, we have a, a phrase, make America great again. It's pretty simple, but it really says that we want to make America great again. And we can do it. We can do it now. But if we were going to suffer another four years like we have suffered for the last four years, I'm not sure the country can ever come back. That's how bad it is. It's so bad. We have to we have to I do think, a lot. I of think things. that's a very real. risk. Yeah, it's a big risk. It's a very real risk. Yeah. And, and, it's you know, I just like to, to note to people listening, like I, I've not been very political before. And, and if just if you look at my track, my record, it's I've actually been. I'm 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 not like some sort of try to paint me as like a far right guy, which is absurd because I'm like making electric vehicles and you know solar and, and batteries helping them with the environment, and uh, and and I actually I I uh, you know I I supported Obama. I stood in line for six hours to shake Obama's hand when when he was running for president, and you know so it's not like I'm like some sort of dyed in the wool long term Republican. I'm actually I would call myself. Uh, you know, historically a moderate Demo Democrat, and, and but now I feel like 
we're really at, at a critical juncture for the country. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people thought, you know, the Biden administration would be a moderate administration, but it's not. And, and obviously, the, the, we're just going to see a, 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 um, an, an even further left uh, administration with, with Kamala. That's, that's my honest opinion. I mean, her dad is literally, uh, it, it, I mean, she was brought up as, a, as an actual, it, her dad is, an, is, a, is a Marxist economist. That's, you can Google it. I mean, it's not a, we're not making this up, you know. Um, that's how she was brought up. So, uh, and, and we, we just, we, we want to have a future that is prosperous. And, and I, I think we're just at this critical juncture. And, um, and it, I think this is a case of the, the, the America uh, is is going to at a fork in the road, and sure. um, and I think it, it will take it, it will take if it, it, the the path to, like you are the path to prosperity, and I think Kamala is the opposite. Then that's my I mean that's my honest opinion. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get attacked like crazy, and you know I've also experienced quite a bit of lawfare myself. Um, and uh, but I'm just tr trying to tell people my honest opinion, and and I I haven't been active in really active in politics before, um, and I'm just trying to point out that my track record historically is been moderate, if not moderate, slightly left. And and uh, so this is to people out there who are in the moderate camp to say, I think you should support um, Donald Trump for president. Um, and and I, I think it's actually a very important juncture in the road. And, and we're in deep trouble if, they if, if, if it goes the other way. Well, I want to thank you. And, you know, I actually always did think of you as somewhat left. I must say that. So it's, uh, it's <laughs> yeah. even more of an well, honor to yeah. have your endorsement. I know how strong you feel about it. But, you know, when you think of her, uh, San Francisco, 15 years ago, I had a great friend, Bob Tish. He said it's the greatest city in America. And now it's you, it's not it's almost not livable there. And California, likewise. And she was involved in the destruction of San Francisco and the destruction of California. And she will be involved in the destruction of our country if people are so unwise as to elect her. And I hope that doesn't happen. And I hope the elections are going to be run honestly. And we're going to turn this country around. We're going to we're going to do things that and we can do it fairly quickly. And we have to get rid of the criminals that have been, you know, given to us by other countries as they laugh. They laugh yeah. at us. They think we're stupid to accept these people. These are radical, stone cold killers in many case cases and terrorists. And they're in our country by the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And we have to take yeah. them out. Yeah, I mean, if if I could summarize it, perhaps you know, I think th th these are issues that I think most people in America uh, would would agree with, which is that we want safe and clean cities, we want secure borders, uh, we want sensible government spending, we want to res uh, restore res both the perception and reality of respect in the in the in the judicial system, just you know, stop the lawfare, um, and, uh, and and I think. We, that that's like, and how are the how are those even right wing positions? I think those are just that's that's just common sense, and and that's uh, I mean, would you agree with yeah, that? Hundred percent. I I don't understand. You know, the whole they call it progressive. They don't like the word liberal anymore, but call it liberal or progressive. I don't understand how somebody could say that it's okay for them to empty prisons into our country. And again, I told you their crime yes, rates all over the world way. are going way down which makes sense. In fact, the next time what we'll do is if something happens with this election, which would be a horror show, we'll meet the next time in Venezuela because it'll be a far safer place to meet than our country, okay? So we'll go, you and I will go and we'll have a meeting and dinner in Venezuela because that's what's happening. Their crime rate's coming down and our crime rate's going through the roof and it's so simple. And it's, you haven't seen anything yet because these people have come into our country and they're just getting acclimated. And they don't know about being politically correct law enforcement or lack of law enforcement. And our police, I, I have to just end with this, we have great police, we have great law enforcement, but they're not allowed to do their job. They have to be able to do their job yeah. without being destroyed. Well, absolutely. And, and it's, it's obviously demoralizing if you're a police officer risking your life uh, to, you know, to, and, you know, to arrest uh, violent criminals who could kill you and do kill you sometimes. Um, and then you, you arrest the violent criminal and, and then the the DA, you know, doesn't prosecute and, and they just let the guy out. Yeah. Well, then, like, why why should a police officer risk their life uh, 
to arrest a violent felon. Well, even worse, if, if the, Elon, if nothing's going to happen. Even, even worse, they prosecute the police officer. <laughs> they they go after it and they prosecute the police officer and they take away his pension. They take away his yeah. job. He loses his family. He loses his house. Well, I, I, th I thought it was very telling, like incredibly telling that, you know, when that there was a case where, uh, you know, a, a sort of a gang of thugs beat up uh, police officers, I think it was in Times yep. Square in New York, and 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 then nothing happened to those guys. They were they were let out zero bail, and uh, I think a bunch of them were given free tickets to California. Well, what is the, I mean that that is that is a that is a gross indignity against the United States, and and that's how I mean this is insane. Like, have we lost all pride? What, what that how can such a thing be allowed to occur? I've never seen anything. You know, we see where they get shot. It's a very dangerous profession, but it's something they're very proud of and they want to be able to do their job. But I've seen them get shot. I've seen a lot of things. But I've never seen where these guys are standing in the middle of a big street, everybody watching them, and they're literally boxing, like punching, stand up fighting a police officer. There were two of them. And yeah. you had about six yeah, of yeah. these guys, and they're punching the hell out of them. And in their own country, they would be dead if they did that. They'd be shot. Yes. They would be shot instantly. And, you know, they come from these countries, and it's taking them a while to realize that we don't do that in this country. But in their own country, yeah. if they stood on a street and had a fight with a police officer, they would be shot. There's no political correctness. And it's such a sad, yeah, it's just, it's such a sad thing to see. And that's the reason you we, have yeah, crime, we, by the way, yeah. because we don't do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, we we just cannot have a situation where our police officers are beat, beaten up on camera uh, by you know a, a, a gang of illegal immigrants, and then nothing happens to 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 the the guys that beat beat up the cops. I mean, and they're let out. This is unacceptable. Well, we're going to change it, um, and we're going to get them out of the country. You know, when I first uh, got involved, they said you couldn't get them back to these countries. You couldn't take them back. In the case of uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, some others. You couldn't get it back. And I said, really? Oh, you can't get it back. Because under uh, Obama, he couldn't get him back. They'd put up, they'd fly him in and they'd put planes on the runways in these countries so you couldn't land the plane. They'd bring him back. And the general told me, the generals told me, sir, we can't bring him back. The countries won't accept MS-13 gang members. They won't accept him. And I said, really, how much do we pay these various countries in terms of economic aid, which is also somewhat ridiculous? And the answer was $750 million. I said, good. Tell them they're in default. They're delinquent. We're not going to do. We're not paying them anymore because they won't accept yeah, it. And you know what happened? They all called me. Yeah, every yeah. one of them. They said we would be honored to take them back, sir. We would be honored. It was so easy. But it's one of those things. And we got them back. We took in so many. You know, the MS-13 yeah. is probably yeah. the worst gangs in the world. They're the most vicious, violent. We took them out of here by the thousands and got them out of here. And their countries took them back. And because I said, you're not getting any more economic aid. And once I said that, they were nice. They wouldn't take them back for Obama. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't take them back for anybody. And now we have a problem because we have this guy. And they, again, they don't take them back anymore with the Biden because they don't respect him. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's just it's just got to it's just got to be done. We we just can't can't have uh, you know, whether they're citizens or not citizens. We can't have. Because they won't pro prosecute citizens either, not not just not just legals. So, uh, that, that if it's you, you can't have violent, you know, repeat violent offenders that are not in, uh, that 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 don't get um, incarcerated. That's right. Because they will uh, they will obviously, by definition, com continue to uh, to to uh, you know hurt people. And 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 I I think where part of this comes from is that there's. Um, and I, you know, I do sort of consider myself liberal in some ways. I mean, I, it's just that you want to have empathy for right. people. Obviously, you want to have empathy for people. I totally agree with that. You want to have empathy, but you also have to have empathy for the victims of the criminals. And if, if you if you just have empathy for the criminals, it's it's actually shallow empathy. It's not real. You're not thinking. You're not. You you have one layer deep uh, empathy. You got to say like, what if, if you don't incarcerate this person, who are they going to uh, hurt? Who are they, they might kill someone. They might rape, rape someone. If if you don't incarcerate them, you have to have empathy for the victims. And there's a lack of empathy for the victims of the criminals, and and too much empathy for the criminals. It doesn't make sense. I, uh, that's why you want to have deep empathy 
for society as a whole, not shallow empathy for, for criminals. Right. And we have to give our police officers the dignity and the respect that they deserve. And we have to let them do their job. They're, they can do a great job, but we have to let them do their job. And if we don't do that, we're, you know, it's, it's going to all... It's going to all disappear. There's never been a society like this where you're allowed to do anything you want and nothing happens. And I'm talking about violent crime. And it's going to get more violent because these are really, really violent people. And we're going to get them out of our country and we're going to get them back to where because they were sent here by the presidents and by the various people that run those countries. And I know every one of those guys. And they're smart people. And they're streetwise people. And they really think that the USA is stupid. They think we're run by stupid people, and they happen to be right. But when I was there, we had no problem. We got them out. We took out thousands of MS-13 gang members. We brought them back. And uh, now, again, they, it's the same old story. We don't do it. And they actually gave them a big increase in aid. They, they raised it up to billions of dollars, and they get nothing for it. So, you know, it's it's. Uh, I hope everybody's going to vote for Trump, and we're going to get this country... Yeah. And I didn't need this. I, I'm like, I didn't need this. I had a very nice <laughs> yeah. life. I didn't need to, to go yeah, through yeah. court systems and go through all the other stuff and run at the sure. same time. I have to run. I have to go through fake trials with, in some cases, corrupt judges, totally corrupt judges. I didn't need it. I had a nice life. I have great locations. I have beautiful oceans that I have places. I, you know, I this was, but I felt it was important. And if I had to, if I had to do it over again, you probably think I'm crazy for doing it, actually. But if I had to do it over again, I would have done it over again because this is so much more important than me or my life. This is we're going to save this country. This country is going down. And these people are bad people that we're running against. And they're liars. They make statements. They 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 do things that are so bad. They they say they're going to make a strong border. They say they've been great on the border and they've been the worst in history. They say they're yes, going to stop it's crime. And the, the, the facts speak for themselves. It's, it's the facts so incredible. Speak for themselves. Like it's, it's gotten got to the point where, where people just don't even bother reporting crime in a lot of that's cities right. because they know nothing is going to happen. Um, you know, that's what I hear anecdotally from from people all the time. Um, so you know, it's just uh, you know, my values. I'm just saying to, to to people out there, like my, you know, the things I that I think are important for the future is like we've got to have safe cities, we've got to have secure borders, we've got to have sensible spending, and and we have and, and we've got to have De, you know, de deregulation, and right. um, so we can have a prosperous future. And then we, we want to have some exciting, you know, sort of moonshot projects that that people can get, get fired up about. And um, you know, that's that's the future I'm looking for. And um, you know, I'm pro environment, um, but I, but I'm I'm not against. Uh, you know, I'm not like in, I, I don't think we should vilify the oil and gas industry because they're, they're they're keeping civilization going uh, right now. And uh, but I do think we want to move. You know, you know, a reasonable speed towards uh, a sustainable energy economy. Those, those are my values, and 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 I think, um, you know, and 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 so I mean that's uh, why I'm su supporting you for president. You know. Well, so. I appreciate. It. We're going to make. We're going to give incentive to companies to come into our country, not to leave our country. We're going to be giving tremendous incentives. We want companies to build here, not to build in other locations. And we want to create jobs. And again, it's about the American dream. You don't hear about the American dream anymore, Elon. You don't hear. You're the American dream in the truest sense. But you don't hear about the American dream anymore. And you're going to hear about it. People, they need that incentive to go out and, yeah. and do it. And they're, they're going to love their lives. I mean, they're going to love, they're going to look forward to getting up in the morning and going to, you know, going to a job that they love, not a job that they can't stand or not any job at all where they have no money, yeah. where they yeah. literally have no money, and then they end up with violence and lots of other problems. No, we're going to do, yeah. we're going to do some great things. And I learned a lot in the first. We had a great economy and all of that. We rebuilt the military. We did so much. But I also learned, and I also learned the best people. I learned the good people, the, the smart people, the dumb people, the people that can do things, the people, you know, you learn. When I first came in, I, I tell people, I was in Washington, D.C. only 17 times, according to the fake news media. I was in 17 times, I never stayed over. And you don't know people. You rely on other people to give you names, and then you realize the people you relied on weren't so good. Now, we had great people, but we also had some where I wouldn't have you know, used them had I known. Now I yeah. know everybody. And I think we're going uh, to really turn things around fast. We have no choice. Otherwise, we're not going to have a country. And 
I really appreciate this has been, to me, it's been a lot of fun being with you. You're an amazing guy. You've done an incredible job and a great inspiration to people, a great inspiration. And I hope you keep going and just uh, continue to do well. And we're going to have a big election coming up. And I think November 5th will be the most important day in the history of our country. I think that election will be the most important election. And I think it'll end up being maybe the most important day in the history of our country. Because if yeah. we don't win, I just feel so sorry for everybody. No, we're, I think we're at a, at a fork in the road of destiny of, of civilization. And, um, and I think we need to take the, the, the right path. And, and I think uh, you're, you're the right path. So I well, think that's what it comes down thank to. Thank you very much, Elon. It's a great honor. And we'll, we'll do it again sometime. And uh, it's been really fun. And I hope you got a lot of viewers. I hear you got a lot. <laughs> but I hope sure. you got a yeah. lot. <laughs> I, I know you got a lot of them. So uh, I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Elon. Thank you very much. Bye.